Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another... Hey, what are you doing? What's that? Don't you even think of that? In this video, ladies and gents, we're going to start adding our character controls. So to do that, we're going to make some adjustments to our player. The first thing we need to do is, if we have our player selected, and we go to Add Component, we're going to add a rigid body 2D to it. Right, this is going to add our physics and allow us to have some gravity on our character. Now, while we've got our rigid body 2D open, we're going to click on the constraints arrow and we're going to freeze its Z rotation. That will stop our character from falling over. Next thing we need to do is we need to add our actual scripting component. Now, if we go to add component, what we're looking for is called a flow machine. So if you type flow and then add our flow machine, and this will allow us to create our macro. Now, we currently don't have any macros created, so if we click on new, and then we go to our macro folder, now this is going to be my character controller, because we're going to use this to control our character. So once you've created that, you'll have your character controller in your macro, and you'll get automatically populated with these two events. Your start event, which is run the first time the game is started, and the update event, which is run every frame. Now, because this is going to be our character controller, we want to be constantly checking if someone is pushing a key down, so we're not going to use our start event. So if we just delete that. Now, what do we want to do? We want to be constantly checking if a character, someone is putting pushing down a key. So what we're going to do is we right click on our flow graph. Right, we're going to go, if you right click it should come up with add event. And what we're going to do is we're going to be checking for an input. Right, and the input we're looking for is called get access. Right, so input get access access name. Now Unity has some predefined access names. The one we're looking for it will be our horizontal. You need to make sure that you capitalize horizontal because that's the way it's done in Unity. So what do we want to do once we know that we're pressing a key? We want to interact with our rigid body 2D on our player. So if we drag out this arrow here and then we type in rigid body, rigid body 2D. And what we want us to do is we want to set the velocity that the character is moving at. So rigid body 2D, set velocity. So you're getting some information here. We're interacting with itself, so this game object. And then we've got our vector 2, which is our x and our y. So if we drag out our vector 2 and say create vector 2 x, y, right, that will split it for us. What we want to do is we want our input get access from our horizontal to drag that into our X. All right, so you can see here that these are still grayed out. That means they're not active. What we need to do is we need to click on this arrow beside update and plug it into our input get access. So now that this cycle here is complete, we can press play. And once the game is playing, you can see that it's constantly checking this information. So if we click on our game screen and then use our arrow keys, you can see our player is now moving left and right. And if we use A and D, it does exactly the same thing. Right, so now that we've tested that works, it's moving a little bit slow. So we're going to speed it up just a little bit. To do that, we're going to break this connection here by right-clicking on it. Instead, we're going to drag this down, and then we're going to add the multiply. All right, so we're going to set A to here, and our value for B, we're just going to set to 5. Then we're going to connect our A, B up to our X again, and go back and test it. Right, so you can see now it's moving much faster. So you can adjust this value here to however you feel. 
Now, alternatively, if you don't want to put the value here, what we can do is we can create a variable instead. So there is four different levels of variables you can have. You can have a graph variable. Right? These variables that will only interact with this graph. You can't use them on another graph. You can have object level variables. Now these variables can be interacted with as long as their graph is uh, attached to this player, so this game object. You can have scene level variables. These are variables that anything within this scene can access. And you can have application level variables. And these are variables that will go across all of your scenes. So we're going to create an object level variable. So if we click on object, and the variable name we're going to create is speed. So type in speed press enter and it gives you a number of options for your type. Now we want to create an integer which is a whole number and I'm going to set its value to 5. Alright so once you've got your variable what you can do is if you drag off of B and click and type in get and in the first one that comes up will be our variable get speed. Alright so all I've got now is my variable controlling this secondary number and it should function exactly the same. The difference is I can change this variable outside of my flow. Right, so if I just click on my player I've got my variables list here and I can adjust it any of my variables without having to go into the flow machine and find it and adjust it that way. So at the moment our script is currently doing two things. It's getting the input and reading it and then it's applying the movement to it. So I'm going to break this up into two different sections just to make it a little bit easier to function with. So I'm going to right click on this connection here to break it. I'm going to break this connection here and I'm going to break the multiple connection here. So I'm going to select these three and drag them over. So how I'm going to break this code down is I'm going to have a section of code that I use to read the input and check it. And it's going to put that information into a variable. And then my section section of code is going to be reading that variable and if it's moving, applying the movement. So what do we need to do? We need to uh, take the information from here and add it into a variable. So if we drag from our AB out, and then type set variable. Right, I'm going to set a graph variable. Right, I'm going to name this variable here and I'm going to call it movement. Now you can see it's all grayed out so if I grab my avoid update and plug it into my set variable right now it activates this section of code. Now I want to know that this is all one group to do that, all you need to do is hold down the control and left click and drag out. All right, and it will group the code together and I'm going to call this get movement. All right, now that we're getting our movement, we need to input our movement or set it. To do that, I'm going to read this variable again. So if I pull off of the x-axis here and type in get. All right, we've got get movement from our graph. All right, this is still grayed out, so I'm going to connect it from my set variable down to my rigid body. And now you can see that these three are also active. So I'm going to control click again, drag over it, and this is going to be my set movement. All right, so now I've broken this down, I'm just going to check again that it still works. So press play. All right, you can see it's constantly checking for movement and running through it. So if I hold down my A key, it still moves. If I use the arrow keys, same again, it still moves. So let's put in our flip. Now to do this, we're going to be checking whether the character is moving. So we're going to right click and we're going to get movement. All 
Now we want to compare what it's doing. So if we drag off of the green and type in comparison, right, it gives a list of things that we can do. So what we want to do is we want to check whether the value is greater than zero. Right, so we drag off of that. What we're going to do is we're going to run a selection and drag off of true, we're going to run a float. So if the value, I'm going to set to minus 180 if it's true, and if it's false, we're going to add a float and we're going to set it to zero. So we're checking if A, so if our movement is greater than B, right? so if it's moving to the right, it should be a positive value. If it's moving to the left, it'll give you a negative value. Right? So if it's true, we're going to float it by negative 180, so we're going to flip it. And if it's positive, we're going to leave it at zero. So if we click off of our selection here, what do we want to do with it? We want to use a quaternion. We're going to create one. Right, and then off of our angle here, we're going to use a transform. And we're going to set the local rotation. All right, now before we finish this off and connect it up, what we're going to check is we're going to check if A is equal to B. So if you're not pressing down any key, and we're going to use a branch. And if it's false, we're going to leave it to our local rotation. So that'll stop our character from flipping back if A is equal to B and you're not pressing any key. So now we need to connect this up and we're going to drag off our rigid body 2D into our branch. And then we're going to group this together as our flip section of code. So let's check it out. If we press play. So if you're not pressing any keys, nothing should happen. If you press D, it should keep moving forwards. If you press A, you can notice that it's flipped on the X axis. Now that's not the axis we wanted to flip. We wanted to flip it on our Y axis. So we need to leave our play. And we need to drag this off of our X. and instead attach it to our Y. So if we try that again, All right, D is moving forwards, A, you can see it flips the eye around to face the other way. All right, that's perfect. So in our next video, we're going to add in our